In this video, we'll be discussing the layers within an artificial neural network. We'll also see how to add layers to a sequential model in Keras. In our last video, we mentioned that the neurons within an artificial neural network are typically organized in layers. And there are many different types of layers. Some commonly used layers are ones like dense, otherwise known as fully connected layers, convolutional layers, pooling layers, recurrent layers, normalization layers, and there are many others. So why all the different types of layers? Well, different layers may perform different kinds of transformations on their inputs, and some layers are better suited for certain tasks than others. For example, a convolutional layer would likely be used in a model that is doing work with image data. A recurrent layer would be used in a model that's doing work with time series data. And a dense layer is just a layer that connects each input to each output within its layer. We won't touch on all the details of each of the different types of layers for now, as some types of layers will deserve more coverage in their own dedicated future videos. For now, let's just focus on what these layers are doing within the neural network. To do this, let's first look at this example image. In this image, we have our first layer consisting of three units. These units together make up our input layer. Each of these three nodes in our input layer represents an individual feature from each sample within our data set that will pass to the model. We can see that each of these inputs are connected to every single unit in the next layer. Now this next layer is a hidden layer simply because it's a layer between the input and output layers. Each of these connections transfers the output from the previous unit as input to the receiving unit. So what is this output that it's passing? Well, each connection from one unit to another will have its own assigned weight, which you can think of as just a number between 0 and 1. Weights represent the strength of the connections between the units. So when you first receive an input in the input layer, that input is being passed to the next unit via a connection and the input will be multiplied by the weight assigned to this particular connection. A weighted sum is then computed with each of the connections that are pointing to this neuron. The sum is then passed to an activation function, which transforms the result to a number between 0 and 1. To recap, we have weights assigned to each connection, and we compute the weighted sum for the connections that point to the same neuron in the next layer. That sum is then passed to an activation function that transforms the output to a number between 0 and 1. Now once we get the result of the transformation from the activation function, that result is what will be passed on to the next neuron in the next layer. Now this same process that we just described will occur over and over again until reaching the output layer. Also note that during this process, the weights for each connection will continuously be changing in efforts to reach optimized weights for each connection as the model continues to learn from the data. Okay, so now we reach the output layer following our hidden layer. We have two output units in this image. These units typically represent categories. So for example, if this model has a task of classifying whether images are cats or dogs, then the output layer would have two units representing two possible outputs, cats and dogs. Now say we're also adding images of lizards to the mix. So our task would then change to be classifying whether an image is of a cat, dog, or lizard. As such, our output layer would have three output units representing each of the three possible image types. So now hopefully we have a general understanding about how layers are functioning within a neural network. We're now going to show what this exact depicted model looks like in Keras. So now we're going to be building a sequential model in Keras, and we talked about the sequential model in a previous video. So first we are just importing the necessary classes that we need to make our model, and we create a variable called model and set it equal to an instance of a sequential object. That sequential object is going to take in an array to its constructor. Now remember our task here is to make this exact neural network that we just looked at within Keras. So the first thing we're going to do is create a dense layer that has five units. This is representative of our hidden layer here. So we're not starting off by specifying an input layer. Instead, within our first hidden layer, we are passing in a parameter called input shape. And this is going to specify the shape of each of our individual inputs from our sample data. In this example, my input shape is three. And then next we specify our activation function. Now in the next layer, we add another dense object and it has two units. So this is representative of our output layer here. And we also specify an activation function. Notice in this next layer, we're not putting an input shape. That's because only the first layer within the sequential model requires an input shape because our model needs to understand the shape of the data that it's initially going to be dealing with. You don't have to specify the shape for the next layers in hidden or output or any other hidden layers that would come in between because the model will be able to infer. It's just the initial data being passed into the model for our input that 
we have to specify the input shape for. Okay, and now this model now that's only about four lines long is exactly representing this depicted model that we just looked at in detail. All right, and one other thing to point out before we wrap up here is that whenever you build your sequential model, there's not a limit to how many layers that you can specify here. So I've only specified two, which actually implies three layers because this input shape is making an implicit input layer but I could continue adding several different layers, either dense layers, convolutional layers, recurrent, whatever layers that I'd like in my network. But here I've just put in the exact amount of layers that map to our image that we looked at. All right, so hopefully now you have a general understanding about what layers are within a neural network and how they're functioning, and also how to build a neural network and specify your layers in Keras. And I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like the video, subscribe, suggest, and comment. And thanks for watching.